Remembering happier times, Helen has nothing but fond memories of her wedding with husband John. The pair were married for 20 years, but last December John died suddenly. Already grief-stricken, Helen was left with the burden of paying for his funeral. He had no life insurance, and despite some help from her father-in-law, she was left with a four-figure bill. I did the funeral as cheap as I possibly could, but now I, I've got the funeral directors banging at my door saying that if I don't pay it, because no, they don't do no funeral plans for after the funeral, then they're going to have to send bailiffs in. But I haven't, I haven't got anything that they can take, I just can't pay it. Helen's even used a fundraising website to try and help pay for the funeral. All the stress, she says, is taking its toll. I go to bed every night, I don't want to get up, I hope I don't wake up. Um, and it's every day, constant worry, every time the phone rings, every time the door knocks, is it going to be the bailiffs? You know, I just, I'm terrified all the time, I don't sleep. The average cost of a funeral in Wales is over £3,500, according to UK figures. Bereaved families are left facing an average debt of £1,700. There's also been an increase in so-called public health funerals, with nearly 150 here last year. Numbers of these very basic types of funeral, paid for by councils, have gone up over 55% in five years. Campaigners say the funeral sector could do more to ensure customers are getting a fair deal. It's an unregulated industry. There's, there's currently no regulation, so funeral directors, cemeteries, crematoriums can charge what they want. And while some are being reasonable, others aren't. Some means-tested funeral payments are available from the UK government, while there are more affordable options in Wales. Yeah, Undertaker Mike Ryan provides funerals for customers in Torvine and Cardiff for under £2,000. It's getting harder out there. It is definitely getting harder out there. People are struggling financially, right? Um, and this is why we, we are doing what we are doing. I see them walk into the, my premises really worried. By the time they go out, they're shaking my hand and saying, thanks, Mike, we now feel relieved. Meanwhile, Helen says she wants more help for people who find themselves in her position, and she's all too clear about what John would make of the situation. He would be absolutely mortified that he left and left me in this situation. He would be really mortified because he, everything he did was for family. He always tried his best to do everything for us. You know, his family was his world. Well, I'm joined now in the studio by Kim Bird, who runs a comparison website for funeral uh, planning. Thank you uh, for coming in. It is a big taboo subject. We don't like to discuss it. Mm. Isn't that part of the problem? Yeah, I think very much so. That If we don't plan, there's no guidance in place. And it's very easy for the emotions to take over and for people to overspend. But you are in that crisis, you've lost someone. The last thing you think about doing is, is shopping around or perhaps ask those questions that might seem to be inappropriate, like how much is this going to cost? Well, there are more and more um, uh, facilities and features now that are available online for you to be able to check the costs and funeral directors are being more transparent about their pricing. So it is getting easier to be able to shop around and to be able to know what you can afford before you get there. I mean, we, we, the average cost £3,500 for a funeral. Yes. Where is all that money going? Who's, who's getting the biggest chunk? Um, well, the biggest chunk probably goes to the funeral directors, maybe about 60%, but um, the rest of the money goes to third party costs such as the cremate, uh, crem crematorium or the burial authority, and that money is needed to maintain the crematoria or for paying for premium space for burial. And of course, everyone's got to make a living, mm -hmm. but is there a danger that people are making too large a profit here out of someone else's misery? I, I don't think so. There is an awful lot that goes into arranging a funeral. Um, it's changed dramatically over the last 10 years um, from what used to be a very traditional Victorian funeral to something that is now more of a um, celebration of life. Um, so yes, th there is an awful lot that goes into that. So what could you do to save money? How could I cut the, cut the costs? Well, um, most importantly, the first thing is don't rush. Think about your budget, what you can afford, and think about what's important to you. 
The next thing is to start shopping around. Now either you might want to call around and if you do do that then make sure that you are comparing like for like or you can come to About the Funeral where you can tailor your funeral online and see the exact cost before you actually ring the funeral director. The next thing is that when you get to the funeral director make sure you let him know or her know what your budget is. It's in everybody's best interest to make sure that you can afford to pay that funeral. And then lastly if price is a consideration consideration. Make sure that your heart doesn't rule your head. It's very easy, as I said, to get carried away with wanting the best and overspending. Well, some very sound advice there, Kim Bird. Uh, thank you very much thank indeed. You.